Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I am going to do a kit up and prep of my canvas. Um, and I thought while I'm busy doing that, um, I might as well do a bit of chatting. Um, I've got a tag here and then as, um, as I've been going through the week, I have been noting down a couple of things uh, that I've noticed. Um, observed about myself and my diamond painting craft so I thought I'd share those things with you guys as we go along so here we go so first off you would have seen in my other video when I do my prepping I don't open all the drills um, just a simple example where is it actually I can actually show you guys the reason for that is with my um, dandelion seeds, I normally do a um, work per color, per um, one color at a time, do the entire canvas. Again, it really depends on the size of the canvas. Sometimes I'll split the canvas in half and do um, one color and then move on to the next color. Um, I just finished my first main, uh, the biggest amount of colour on um, the dandelion seed and we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, we've got 13 bags um, and yes, I admit I do miss some drills but come on, seriously 13 bags worth of drills, um, that's quite a lot to have missed out on. I'm not saying it's impossible, I, I doubt it very much, but it just goes to show um, with some companies actually how much you actually get left over. So that's gone completely off track, but it, not really because you can actually see the point that I'm trying to make in not having to open all my um, drills. Simple example, 13 bags. So moving on. Um, there is in this video there is going to be a fair amount of crackling with the bags um, I am going to try and keep it to a minimum guys but you know it is what it is um, how many bags is that oh okay so it's 16 bags of coffee um, so we'll do that with them um, I've now split it in half, but I'm really only going to be doing uh, three bags because these little containers only take uh, four bags at a time. I prefer to stick to the three, that way it's not too full. Um, I probably start off with this one anyway, so. I'm just going to grab my two bags there and maybe I'll do it because I've got an open spot here because um, it was only 31 colours yeah 31 colours I've got an extra space there so it's um bear with me a moment please call on there we go let's look at that boom right okay so that. Okay, and then um, 939 was the next one up. Right, so um, just on the observations. It's almost been, what is it now, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. That's nine months since um, Hurricanes drill me get on. And to be perfectly honest with you guys, I'm still getting canvases um, that I'm finding um, popping drills with. And funny enough, it's not just Hurricane. I don't know whether it is the manufacturing company that they get their drills from uh, or a lot of the companies get their drills from that is now um, caused the drill we get on but um, 
I'm still getting it. Uh, it's probably now the third company that's including Hurricane that has um, these pop and draw issues. Um, I'm happy to insert some photos at some point if you don't know. Yeah, I think I'll actually do that and um, just do a couple of uh, snappies for you guys. Of what a um, what the canvas actually looks like on a drum again on because yes I am stubborn that way I actually still do it um, the first one I did was actually a present so I didn't really have much of a choice I had to complete it um, so it is doable it's just extremely frustrating so I wouldn't recommend it to anyone but if you do end up getting a canvas with the with the drill issue um, try and get those drills replaced but if they end up sending you drills again which I've had with my um, superhero one um, you can still make it work it's just not ideal so moving on from that uh, one of the other observations there is a lot of chatter chatter about what um, Kitting up process works best for you. Now I have tried a couple of them, um, but I can honestly say that um, I'm probably going to be sticking with the containers. I used to have uh, bigger containers, and I had them in um, plastic contain uh, plas bigger plastic containers. Uh, those work really well for the bigger kits, um, but you're constantly having to go through them. So what I'm really liking, and you guys would have seen these, is um, the Craftmates Lockables. Oh, it's so pretty. I love it. But it's not worth using something like this for uh, a small project because, you know, there's... All of this is going to be worth quite good for apart from these two two big colors um everything else is going to be quite good for the smaller smaller one um this is for my my um dandelion seed i think it is 52 colors um in this one so that's that's quite nice for a bigger project yes great um i've tried the ziplocs um the annoyance that I found with the Ziploc ones is that um, I have to still pour out my drills if I f because I do one color at a time. Um, I have to end up still throwing pouring out drills if I find a spot that I missed or a symbol that I missed just to just to put it in. Whereas with these ones, you can just quickly pick it out, open it up. Dip, dip your pen in, boom, done. So this is the reason why I'm thinking that probably my containers, um, I'll probably be sticking with the container option on these um, going forward. Again, it really just depends on your mood. You know, it changes like the, um, like the sun and the weather changes, so to speak. So yeah, it's you know, whatever works for you, I'm just putting different options out there. I will do, probably do another video at some point. It's just observations that I had during the week. Um, another thing that I have observed um, during the week is that I, I have a couple of canvases that um, I pretty much just put duct tape around them as a as a frame and then um, sealed them and then put them on the wall um, I wasn't too fussed the ones that I have at work well the one that I have at work the one that my mum has at work and then I have three up on the wall let me just take this one off for you guys and you can actually see now this has been um, can't actually really see it but um, it's starting to wobble a bit, become a bit more wobbly. Um, it's an easy enough fix. So just an observation is 
just make sure that you put that backing board on just to keep it flat because at the end of the day when I when I initially put them up on the wall they were straight it just seems that with uh, I don't know whether it's maybe the heat because my room gets quite warm during the day that that's maybe that what's causing the wobble in it um, just it wasn't really an experiment it's just now that it ended up kind of being an experiment and therefore we have um, an outcome on that is that um, they do wobble if you don't put a, a hard surface backing around them so what I'm going to be using is I'll probably just take a, a, a box um, cut it to shape and stick that at the back boom done so no hassle with that one uh, those were just um, my observations for the week um, when I review the video I'll just because it kind of even though I made notes it kind of feels a little bit like I'm waffling and I uh, just want to make sure that I get my point across with that um, so I might add a couple of notes on screen based on um, what I've actually said so getting back to um, actual prepping <laughs> um, quite ironically I end up waffling more than what I'm actually prepping so um, I thought I'd do a, um, a tag to because you guys don't really apart if you're my family obviously you know who I am all that kind of jazz but for all the newcomers um, I thought I'd do a get to know me tag um, yeah because you know why not right okay let me just get that tag open all right um who is your hero right so you can take that in in two parts you can go who's your superhero my favorite superhero is batman um if you talk to my mom um she doesn't believe that batman is a superhero he's just um a guy with money and in this day and age my other mum said, which makes a lot of sense, she said that uh, in this day and age, he is probably the only real superhero. So that's our little uh, family debate because uh, my mum is, mum A, my biological mum, is a Superman fan. So she'll rip into Batman on a regular basis. I think it's just to kind of wind me up really. I don't think she really has that much of a preference. It's just mainly that she grew up with um, Superman. Whereas I grew up with the Bats. Um, I'm a huge Batman fan. Um, I've got quite a bit of um, Batman memorabilia. If uh, you go and ask uh, Batman Batman memorabilia providers, they'll probably say that I've got most of their, their supplies. Um, sorry guys, I seem um, out of breath. I kind of am. I'm, um, I've been fighting off a cold flu thing for, what is that, a couple of weeks now. And um, it's been good so far because I'm not getting sick sick like I did last year. Last year I got pneumonia three times. So I've been lucky enough so far that I have not been that sick. Um, but this week I am seeming to be a, a bit more out of breath than what I normally am. So uh, please bear with that. Um, right, so back to the question. Uh, Superhero, that would be Batman. If we're talking about real life hero, um, yes guys, this is going to sound cheesy as, but um, that's my mum. My mum is my hero. She has, um, she raised me pretty much as a single parent. Um, 
she's been through some tough, tough times in her life and um, she's come out with her head held high um, every day I I look back, you know, especially if I have something challenging going on in my life. Um, I like to look back at my parents. So both um, both my mums and my dad as well. My dad is, has, has um, had some um, difficulties in his life as well. So even with my dad as well, he's, he's probably my hero. <laughs> I've, um, I'm... I must, uh, must say I'm quite lucky that I've got quite a few heroes in my life. So my parents, they're probably at the top of my list. But um, I think my family as a whole are pretty much my heroes. Because I, um, I don't know whether I was raised that way. But um, I've been quite lucky in learning from them and learning through their experiences um, so I don't make those same mistakes so it's it's not necessarily just uh, saving lives or yeah, saving lives in a way because they probably saved my life a couple of times through making those errors so I don't make those mistakes uh, so yeah getting back to the point my my family they're, they're my heroes. Uh, question two. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? Um, I A couple of years ago, I went for a holiday in the UK. Um, I just loved it. They're the, the history, I think. Um, well, the, the takeaway for me was that... Um, you could feel the history, so I probably want to move to the UK, but I'm quite happy where I am. I stay in a um, small town. I stay in Wellsford, so um, if you're from New Zealand, you'll know that it's pretty small. If you blink, you, you, you've gone through it. Um, so I'm quite happy here. Uh, we travel a bit but for work, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy where I am. Might do another holiday to uh, the UK, but nothing, nothing for the moment. Um, question three. What is your biggest fear? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a scaredy cat. I'm pretty much a scaredy cat. I like to colour in the lines, um, so to speak. So... Um, I don't, um, don't take too many risks, so I'll, I'll leave that up to my dad. He is an adrenaline junkie like no one's business, so he's the one that, um, is quite happy jumping off buildings, you know, the whole bungee jumping, sky jumping type stuff. He's, um, quite keen to do that, um, when he does it, so, I, I don't, I don't, that's not me, I'm quite happy plodding along, playing on the safe side of things, um, but in a serious note, biggest fear is, is probably um, the loss of uh, someone in my family. Uh, I've been quite lucky in my life that um, I haven't lost anyone in my family, my close family yet. Um, the only one that I've lost um, was my dad's dad um, and we lost him a week before I was born so my mum's uh, my mum likes to likes to say that he kind of went up to heaven to go and get me you know so it's it's a sweet it's sweet for me, that's very, very sweet way of thinking about it. So other than that, yeah, that's probably my greatest fear is uh, loss of someone in my family. Uh, next question, question five. Uh, what would you change about yourself if you could? Uh, well, I'm already working on that is my temper. I've got a horrible, horrible temper. I get it from 
both parents, although uh, if you go and ask them, they'll say that neither one of them have um, the same part. I am getting a lot better with that. I don't know whether it's wisdom or just being tired. Um, where I just go, you know what, I don't have the energy to be fussing or, or losing my temper, really. Um, so I've, there's, there's recently where I've been, where I've noticed it's a case of, you know, it's things that I would just snap like nothing. Um, I kind of just go, it's water off a duck's back, just whatever, carry on. So that's um, probably what it, what I would change, and I think I'm succeeding with that. Uh, what really makes me angry is the next question, question six. So uh, what really makes you angry? Um, <laughs> I guess it really just depends on my mood. It could, it could be a variety of things. Um, um, People that aren't stupid that act stupid, because there, for me, there isn't really stupid people. It's a, it's a very odd word, stupid. It's very, it's a weird word to use. It's, um, let's use a simple example. Maybe it's a case of um, you'll get people asking you things that you very well know that they could just use a Google search and search for it and find the answer. Um, so maybe it's a it's a it's laziness. Yeah, yeah. That that's that's a good one is it's people are lazy. It's um they'd much rather have someone else do it than having to do it themselves when it's easy enough for them to kind of do it themselves. So yes, people being lazy, that probably makes me angry. Extremely angry. Um but I guess I'm also getting better with that. Moving on. Don't need to repeat the previous question. Um, what motivates you to work hard? You know what? What motivates me to work hard is money. I like my pay packet every fortnight. So I go to work, go do my job, and get my money so I can spend it on my hobby. So there we go, that was a quick and easy one. Um, what is your favourite thing about your career? Um, I think it's uh, the, the, it's quite versatile. Um, being a personal assistant to two managers, you can't really get bored because um, they're two different people. They have different needs, um, different demands. Um, so yeah, that's um, it's it's quite a bit of hustle and bustle and keeping busy. So I'd probably say that is my favourite thing. Is there's no way I'm going to get bored at work. So um, yeah, that's my favourite thing is going to work. The versatility of it. Yeah. Um, what is your biggest complaint about your job? The travel. Yeah, that's the biggest complaint. I travel an hour and a half to get to work. Now, this is not my job's fault. Um, we used to stay quite close, but um, when my parents bought a house, uh, we kind of moved out of um, Auckland up north more. Because um, it's... Um, Bit of bang for your buck, really. Uh, so we stay in Wellsford. We do travel uh, quite a bit. Get to work every day. So that would probably be my biggest complaint. Um, I whoever um, out there is working on teleporting, um, can you please get a move on with that already? And can you please make sure that it's also um, not the most expensive thing in the world because um, I'd like to get a teleporter here at home that way it's just out of bed boom at work done and done that that, that would be really good uh, what is your proudest accomplishment 
Yeah, that's kind of difficult because, you know, you don't go around tooting your own horn as a rule. Um, I think um, that would probably be is just um, the way that I'm dealing with life as a whole and growing um, in myself and I don't know whether it's an age thing with um, as I'm getting older I just care less about little things that actually don't really impact my my life um, if you think about it you um, sometimes you get so caught up in crap that is really not that um, important yeah that's probably my biggest accomplishment um, what is your child's proudest accomplishment I don't have children uh, Patch what is your proudest accomplishment um, Patch Patches is my cat um, her proudest accomplishment is having to being able to sleep while I've got the big light on that would probably be her biggest accomplishment for the moment because normally she um, I like to say she glares at me with her eyes um, or growls at me with her eyes so yeah uh, what is your favorite book to read I don't have a favorite book um, I have a favorite uh, series um, uh, below it does say who is your favorite author so um, at the moment that would be the child he does a series of books um, called Jack uh, and the main character's name is Jack Reacher it's it's actually quite good I quite enjoy enjoy that um, with the diamond painting and all the other crafty things that I do I don't read as often as I probably should um, but sometimes I just want to unwind I don't want to think or um, read or focus on anything serious so yeah moving on uh, what makes you laugh the most um, it really just depends. Um, uh, what was that? We were listening in the car. We were listening to some stand-up comedy. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd say probably good comedy. That, that gets me cracking quite a bit. Um, what was the last movie you went to? What do you think? Uh, Captain Marvel. You know what? I was actually quite uh, pleasantly su surprised. Um, you know, I, I don't know, for some reason I wasn't really all that um, excited about seeing it. But um, it was actually really, really good. Um, I quite enjoyed it. Um, I'm not looking forward to going to see the last um, Avengers movie again um i'm more of a uh, dc than a marvel fan purely just because of batman but um i do still go out and watch um watch the marvels uh deadpool obviously come on seriously he's a crack up so um yeah it's um captain marvel was pretty good um well worth it um if you haven't seen it yeah go out and watch that It's quite random because you go from something that what was the last movie that you watched and then the next question is um, what did you want to be when you were small? Um, I don't know about necessarily small. I was probably just wanting to be a princess like any other girl. But um, as far as I can recall and even, even still really um, if I could um, get my A in GG I'd probably be able to do it but I'm lazy. Um, I've always wanted to join the police, 
Uh, I did give it a fair whack a couple of years ago. Um, but because in New Zealand I was, um, I didn't get my, I was having issues getting my permanent residency. And in New Zealand you need to be permanent resident to become a policeman. Oops. Makes sense. Um, so, um, yeah, I didn't. I did a, um, I've always wanted to be a policeman. I still kind of want to be a policeman. Um, just can't be bothered doing it. Or putting in all the hard work that goes into it. Um, so yeah. Okay. I'll skip that one. If you could choose to do anything for a day, what would it be? Um... I kind of do that already because on a weekend I can sit the whole day and do diamond painting. Um, I um, what is the term? It's um, not a, not a cheap day, but um, you know, it's I'm easy to please. There we go. That's that's the word. Uh, easy to please. Um, so yeah, probably spend a whole day diamond painting. That would be awesome. Well kind of do that already uh what is your favorite game or sport you watch and play now i don't play any sports i never have um but i really enjoy watching cricket again i haven't watched cricket for uh quite a few years really i've uh, lost touch with ah no it's gone in smooth everywhere um I've kind of lost touch with cricket, but yeah, I'd probably say that's probably my favourite sport. Um, one day when I'm all grown up, I want to experience a um, what is it called? Ice hockey match. You know, that that always looked quite cool. So that's something that I. Not necessarily my favourite sport, but it's something that I want to experience. Some, you know, like a bucket list type of thing. Alright, uh, next. Would you rather ride a bike, ride a horse, drive a car? That's a silly question. Drive a car, obviously. It's a lot more convenient. Um, what would you sing at karaoke night? Uh, ABBA. Any ABBA, really. Because that's, that's like party music. Um, what two radio stations do you listen to in the car most? Okay, so most of the time I um, listen to Spotify. I don't really listen to the radio that much anymore, but um, if it had to be, what's it? It's not more FM. I can't think of the station station's name right then, but the other one is the Rock. So they um, they play um, obviously rock music, metal, alternative, that type of stuff. Um, so yeah. Which would you rather do? Wash dishes, mow the lawn, clean the bathroom, or vacuum the house? Hmm. Vacuum the house, I guess. It's no really particular preference there, but um, I'm just thinking of stuff that I already do, which is vacuum the house. If you could hire someone to help you, would it be to be with uh, to do with cleaning, cooking, or yard work? Funny enough, um, it'd probably be cooking because I don't I don't cook. Um, yard work. Uh, when I stay on my own, I don't stay in a house. I normally stay in an apartment, so I don't have a yard. Uh, cleaning, it's. Um, Funny enough, when you stay on your own, you don't really make a mess. Um, so it stays quite clean, it's normally just a bit of dusting and vacuuming. 
So I probably just said they're cooking because um, uh, when I stayed on my own, I used to live on uh, minute noodles and veggies, which is probably not the best. Anyway, if you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, bread. Because with bread you can pretty much put any sauces on it. It doesn't, uh, there's no disclaimer saying that you can't add any condiments onto that. So, um, you can pretty much put anything on a piece of bread. So yeah, bread. Um, who's your favourite author? We've already gone through that. It's Lee Child. Um, have you ever had a nickname? What was it? I have... Um, a nickname. It's a family pet name, I guess. Um, it's Kandas or Dasi. Um, a lot of people, even friends, pick up um, the name, so that's pretty much it, really. Uh, do you like or dislike surprises? Why or why not? Um, Really it just depends. If it's for a party, I guess it's just, you know, I don't mind. I don't need to. I think it's the preparation part that probably, um, that's where the dislike and dislike comes in. So if it's for a party, I don't mind because I'm not the one needing to prepare anything. If it's, um, if it's, say, work-related, um, I... Because of my role and what I do, I'm a personal assistant. The more warning I have in planning for something, the better, I guess. So, uh, yeah, that's probably where the like and dislike comes in with surprises. Uh, in the evening, would you rather play a game, visit a relative, watch a movie or read? It depends on whether or not it's a school night. Um, because we get home fairly late, we even even not when we were staying in in Auckland. Um, I don't know. For me, is during the week I just want to unwind. I don't want to um, don't want to be um, driving around doing stuff. I want to be at home. Eat my food. Uh, probably watch a movie if we're looking at this because um, a lot of the time I'll watch YouTube, but um, I do have my regular movies that I like to watch over and over. So, yeah, watch a movie. Would you rather vacation in Hawaii or Alaska, and why? I don't really know. Um, I don't. I should actually ask my mum. That been to Hawaii. Um, what's the humidity like in Hawaii? Because here it's terrible. Um, it's not necessarily that hot. It's not as hot as it would get in South Africa. Uh, but man, does it get humid? And I've been here for. This is now my eleventh, eleventh or twelfth year. Um, and I'm still not used to the humidity. Um, and also to clarify, uh, South Africa and the coastline, you still get uh, humidity. I, um, where I come from, um, was more inland, so there wasn't really um, humidity. It was more dry heat. So Alaska is going to be pretty cold. Um, again, it will really depend on what I'm required to do on my vacation. If I'm meant to be outside doing stuff, um, I probably, oof, yeah. Yeah, so firstly I'd go with, is it humid or not? If it's not humid, I'd probably go with Hawaii rather than Alaska. But if it's going to, if I can be doing indoorsy things like, you know, hang out with the family or crafts or um, stuff like that, then I'd probably say Alaska because um, 
the idea of a nice fireplace and um, and it being nice and warm. Yeah, so really, there's some different factors. Uh, would you rather win the lotto or work at your perfect job and why? I want to win the lotto. Why is it? Why would you? Who would ask why? Um, because that way I can still do my perfect job because um, I don't think it is safe for anyone to go that they're probably not going to work when they win the lotto because you'll um, they'll probably end up spending all your money if you don't do some kind of work. Um, I would still work part time. Um, probably something that's close to home rather than um, having to drive to Auckland every day. So I'd still want to work. Um, maybe do some charity work as well. Um, yeah, so even if I don't get paid for it, I'd still want to, you know, contribute to uh, the community. Something like that. So yeah, definitely win the lot. I win the money. Um, who would you want to be stranded with on a deserted island? My cats. No offense to my family, I love them, but um, if you can only make one choice, it's probably be my cats. money was no object what would you do all day so yeah that would that would be again it's um, um, to more streamline it I would probably do a half time job uh, half time ha um, half day job maybe three days a week or something not necessarily the entire week um, yeah Um, yeah, half day, and then the, the rest of the time would probably be focused a bit more on my hobbies. Um, I would like to, um, one other thing I really want to learn how to do is blacksmithing. And unfortunately, in New Zealand, it's actually a full-time course. So you can't really do that on a part-time basis. So, uh, blacksmithing and glass blowing. So I probably want to do that. That would be quite nice and some nice skills to do. Um, if you could go back in time, what here would you travel to? I don't know. I don't, no, don't want to go back in time. I don't want to do all that crap again. It's done. Let's just... Uh, keep on moving forward. Yes, we cannot find reverse. Um, who would your friend? How would your friends describe you? I don't know. We're gonna. I guess we're gonna need to ask her. I am actually catching up with some of my friends, so I'll actually ask them just for sake of asking. Um, what are your hobbies? Okay. Well, if you watch my channel, um, you do have a fair idea of my hobbies already. So, um, it's crocheting or any yarn crafts I find quite um, interesting. And diamond painting. Something else that I want to start looking into or putting a bit more focus on is paper crafts. Um, so, I'm not necessarily referring to origami. Um, I'm preparing more to stay uh, card making, something like that. Um, so where are we at? Okay, so I'm only going to do up to 40 because I think I need to kind of wind this up. <sighs> okay. What is the best gift you have been given? You know what, it's difficult to say because my mum is an amazing present shopper. She knows exactly what you want when you want it. Um, so every year is probably, it's, I'm going to have to go as every year is probably, oh wow, yeah, that's the best present I ever received. So yeah, my mom is quite good at shopping. Um, 
What is the worst gift you ever received? I don't think I've ever received anything. Um, one thing that I have noticed is, and I don't know whether it is because I'm so transparent, but um, people are actually quite good when they buy presents for me. It's almost like, yeah, I really needed that. So, yeah, nothing, nothing I can say. Um, aside from necessities, uh, what thing could you not do go a day without? My phone. My phone. Um, it's amazing. Um, a while back, and and if you, um, if you're an eighties kid. Or even probably 90s. Um, you can still remember when um, your mobile phone wasn't really that much of a priority um, in your life. But I pretty much do everything with my phone. I shop with my phone. Everything apart from taking calls as my family would say, because um, my phone is always on silence, I never hear the thing ring, so I don't take any calls. So, it's funny enough, <laughs> it's made purpose I don't actually use them for. Uh, yeah, so my phone, and um, list two pet peeves. Replacing the toilet paper is Absolutely one. Um, what else? It's coming back to that whole asking silly questions. Let's not use the term stupid because stupid is, it's not actually a term. Um, asking silly questions that you could very well answer for yourself. Google um, is a wonderful search engine. Um, YouTube is a wonderful source of information. Um, maybe first try and solve that problem yourself before you ask someone. Now, I never have a problem with helping someone, but if I very well... I know very well that that person could probably answer the question themselves by just um, typing it into a search bar in Google. Yeah, anyway, let's not um, go off in a tangent on that one. Where do you see yourself in five years? I don't know, that's very much an interview question. Um, <laughs> probably still doing what I'm doing. Do uh, maybe um, do a couple of uh, other crafts, maybe. Um, growing my channel, um, making some new friends um, online and otherwise, I guess. Um, meeting people, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Nothing too serious. Um, I did think about doing a degree, but I'm too lazy, I can't be bothered. Maybe, oh, maybe in five years I will um, have the inclination to do that again, <laughs> to um, start studying again. There we go. Alright guys, so that's been 40 questions. Um, I'm just going to finish off with the prep of this canvas. Um, so, as you can see, I am putting my masking tape on it. Um, just for that sticky side of it and then I am going to uh, just prep the cover sheet as well now you don't necessarily because this is not really that big of a canvas you don't necessarily have to cut the um, cover sheet but um, it does kind of make things a little easier just peel that back and where I fold it in half 
I'll just cut it. interesting trying to get the cover sheet back properly but um it shouldn't take too long we've got the start of it right yeah we'll go we'll fast with that in a minute so um that's pretty much it. Uh, let's have a look. No real. Ooh, stock, stock, let go. Right, so this is, canvas is really not all that bad when it comes to, um, the rivers, but we'll fix them up, make them bridge, and ready to go. see but um, I pull I cut it and then I pull the blade back and then I'm just using this side here to flatten it out So, um, because I'm going to be doing a time lapse, might as well just give you some, guys some um, an idea of um, how I get ready to do a canvas or draw on a canvas. So, um, I look at the biggest amount of draws that I need to put down. So that would be the seven four two, and then. Is the seven sorry, it's actually the nine three nine. So we probably start with the nine three nine first. Um and I think those are the C yeah, it's the C's. All this okay, that is fine. Yeah, that, that's fine. Let's just oh, put your bubbles there. Come along, buddy. Out you go. It. Okay, so what I normally do is um, because my canvas is split in half, I will probably work in this half first. So I will pull this halfway again and seal it like this. Okay, right. 
So I keep all um, all of my sheets from other canvases that I've done before. So because this one is a smaller one, um, I'll be using smaller pieces. So just to try and protect as much of the adhesive area as possible, I will cover up where I'm not working. So like that. And um, I'll probably start off, to start off with, I'll probably cover that bit so I can focus on this strip here. Now, because it's going to be color blocking, it's probably not going to take me that long to get this little piece here done. Um, but that's kind of my method of um, covering up as much of the space. Um, Yes, I I can drop a tray like no one's business, and then there's just drawers all over the show. So that it's the it's the preventing the mess, you know, the fluffs and the getting your sleeve stuck, getting your hand stuck to the canvas, and then there's also the mishaps of dropping your tray, uh, moving your tray, bumping your tray, getting drawers all over the show. So having to pick all those that off is. Um, a lot easier if you only have um, a little piece exposed at a time. Um, Alright guys, um, thank you very much for hanging around with me. This has been um, quite a long video for myself. I can actually feel it in the throat. Um, uh, hopefully you guys have learned a couple of things about me and um, I'm not getting too bored with my rambling. Um, thanks again for joining me and getting this canvas prepped and ready. Um, watch out for that time lapse. Um, I'll probably start that real soon as well. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!